Hi everyone, it's Jerry. There's a fun game from Season 9 of the ongoing Top Chess Engine Championship that I'd like to share with you. I think you'll enjoy this. This is the game between the engine Naum, playing on the white end, and Houdini. Just to give you some insight here, this is a rapid time control game, 25 minutes with a 10 second increment. And as far as the strength of each engine, Naum is just above 3,000 rating, and Houdini is nearly 3,200. So let's see what it is about this game exactly that has me titling it Houdini's Pawn Storm. Starts quiet enough. d4, d5, knight f3, e6, and bishop f4. The calm before the storm. c5, knight c3. You see many computers make a move like this, where the c pawn is obstructed. Usually something to steer clear of in queen pawn like games. C pawn likes to contribute, but in this game it will not. Knight f6. This is not a threat. Knight b5 can be met with queen a5 and the knight must return. However, after e3, this is something, and that idea is killed altogether, a6. I've played games before in similar situations where I just develop and say, well, I could meet this move with knight a6 and I'm defending the threat. That is true, but what's also true is you're not getting rid of this knight so easily. This is a bother to black. You can't play a6. Can't get rid of that knight so easily. So, this move should be shut down, and it is a6 on board, bishop e2, b5, putting to use a6. It's not developing, but is grabbing some queenside space, maybe trying to give the knight a timely kick. That stopped, though. a3 secures the knight. b4 would not be a good idea because the A-file would open up, and the very thing you wanted your A-pawn to do, control B5, he isn't doing anymore because of this pin. Big trouble for black. So, B4 is no good. Some natural stuff coming in now. Bishop B7. White's king is now castled. Knight B to D7. White improves the knight. This file can open up at any moment. Knight takes knight, and the first move of this game that caught my attention. Knight takes knight. Why not uh, do this? Recapture and develop. You could do that, but let's see what the idea behind knight takes knight is exactly. Queen d3, with this last move, white has connected rooks. Black, on the other hand, still needs three more moves. Bishop move, castles, queen move, before there's a connection between the rooks. Few moves back. Black gets one of them in. Bishop e7, natural enough. Bishop f3, improving the bishop, possibly preparing a pawn break. Ideally, this is what white would like to do here, have the position open up, create pawn captures, and put to use, hopefully, this lead in development. But now comes one of the most committal, or eh, I could probably say it, the most committal move in chess, g5. At least on the black end. Yeah. Castling over here. Not a good choice. Three holes are now present. So black's basically going all in with a move like g5. Bishop's hit. Bishop g3. Black is not finished. h5. Threatening to trap the bishop. There's now a new square available. f5. Yeah. All eight pawns are rolling. Bishop e2. g4. Rook f to d1. King f7. Let's just stop for a moment. Um, What to say here? This is a... Don't try this at home <laughs> type position. Uh, a lot of uh, 
principles have been violated here, let's say. 16 moves in, 9 pawn advances, and you're making a king move. You're not castling, just making a king move. Okay, black is, with this last move, a step closer to connecting rooks, but wants to keep the rook here. Controlling the h-file. Black's looking to attack the white king, grabbing a ton of space. Now, how is it that black can get away with maybe doing something like this? Well, there isn't a great way to have this position open up. There isn't a great way to gain access to, let's say, the black king position. You know, there's a lot of pawns that have moved forward, but where is that uh, key pawn break? I mean, when that f5 move was played, there's now a pretty strong lockdown on any e4 break. Sure, there can be a capture here, but is this really benefiting Team White? You know, the knight. Can he not be the one to recapture and improve and maybe eye up e4? Not a great way to get at the black king. Not a great way to uh, exploit these violations Several pawn moves, nine pawn moves of the first 16 moves, and a king move like this. Let's see how play follows. Queen d2, rook g8, h takes, h takes. We now have a completely opened h file. Rook f1, serious space disadvantage here for white. Yeah, these pawns are a bit much. Knight f6. Queen to e1, let's see how white tries to defend. Bishop to d6, this is one of the last, well, really, the only defender of white's king. So black's trying to eliminate that. Bishop d6, white hangs on to the bishop. Now the rook gets right back over to the open file. f4, the queen is there, we saw the idea now behind queen to e1. But this is already gone for Team White. Rook h5, preparing to double up, triple up, whatever it takes. This is the inroads into White's position. The h-file. So rook a to d1. Well, that's the only rook that could go there. Queen h8, g3. This right now is the glue. Bishop on h4, without this bishop around... Well, if the bishop isn't around, you get in here. h1, h2 squares. So let's see how black gets rid of that bishop. First inconvenience is the knight, pushing forward yet again with the pawn. That knight is rocked back. Bishop to e7. Aha. Uh -huh. Preparing to challenge that bishop. Also, improve the knight. This is game over for Team White. C files now opened up. All pieces are playing for black. This bishop, at any moment the pawn can move, the rook is here, the knight's now doing what? Hopping into the center. Every piece doing something. Yeah. Bishop d3. There goes the bishop. What more is there to do? If you take here, you're getting mated. Instead of a bishop move, bishop takes bishop. You got a mate in three happening. So, can't even move the bishop. Bishop takes, pawn takes, rook takes. Rook h3. If rook takes rook, we're recapturing with the queen. And that's going to be a disaster. Mate in 6, it's calling for already. Bishop takes knight. F takes. And there's nothing here. There hasn't been anything here for white. Queen h5, preparing to now triple up. Knight d2, rook h8, queen g1, g3, supporting rook h2 now, maybe even queen f3 in some lines, and just playing it out a few more moves. After d4, on takes, enters the bishop with an e3 move. In the game, though, the move, this is the last move of the game, f5, and it goes no further. At this point, uh, white throws in the towel. This is the end of the game. There's, it's already calling for a mate 
in eight. Why don't you just show one of the lines? Let's go with this one. Suppose pawn takes pawn, pawn takes king e8, queen takes, rook takes rook, rook takes rook, and this king gets walked all the way down pretty much. And what more is there? King here, queen h5, and then rook to g6. But uh, this is as far as it goes after f5. It's already enough. The chart's calling for mate at this point. But uh, interesting game. Uh, one that I could actually, you know, computer games are quite often pretty difficult to wrap your head around. Uh, difficult, difficult to understand. But this one, it's instructive seeing the C pawn not be a contributor. Uh, could violate certain opening principles here. Uh, making multiple pawn moves. Every pawn is advancing in this one, but how can you get away with this? How can you... Uh, what what allows stuff like this to happen in the game? Well, the position cannot be cracked open so easily. Black can go on castle. Black can make nine pawn advances in this specific case. Black has control over the key pawn breaks, and there wasn't a good way for white to... Uh, put to use that uh, lead in development in this tremendous space advantage, this tremendous pawn storm was really interesting to see. Just uh, crashing through here on the H file, broken right down. So a cool game, definitely has a nice little look to it. An aesthetically pleasing game, seeing all those pawns advance so early on. Uh, anyhow, feel free to share any feedback to this game or this video in the comment section below, and I hope you enjoyed it. That's all for now. Take care. Bye.